Welcome to this video on DC shunt generators. In this video, we're going to use some basic circuit theory to show how we can calculate the output current, the output power, and the efficiency of a DC shunt generator. So the DC shunt generator is different from the DC series generator because the field windings and the armature are in parallel with one another. And we can see that in the circuit diagram on the left here. So we have our armature, which we're expressing as a voltage source and a resistance because the armature itself will have a resistance. And in parallel, we have our field windings. And connected to both of these, we have our load, in this case, a resistor, which serves as the output of our circuit. So if we have a look at the diagram on the right hand side here, we can see this reflected in this picture where we have our armature, which we've discussed in a previous video, rotates and produces an induced current, which flows through the circuit. In parallel with the armature, we have our field windings and connected to both of these, we have our load resistor. So let's have a look first of all at how we can calculate the output current, the current that will flow to the load in the case of a DC shunt generator. Let's say first of all, our armature produces a voltage of 100 volts. And the resistance of that armature is five ohms. The resistance of the field windings, 30 ohms. And the resistance of the load in this case, we'll say is 10 ohms. So same as before, we want to calculate the current that is produced by our armature. So I'll call that IA, the current from the armature. And that's going to be equal, using Ohm's law, to V over the total resistance of our circuit. Now we have a problem, first of all, because our circuit has some parallel elements to it. So we have to think carefully about how to calculate the total resistance of our circuit, starting at the armature. So if we start at the armature, first of all, we go through a resistance of 5 ohms, but then we reach a point here where we split, and we can go either through the 30 ohms of the field windings back to the armature, or we can go through the 10 ohms of the load back to the armature. And so these two elements, the load and the field windings, are in parallel with one another. And we have to take that into account when we're calculating the total resistance. So I'll just make a note here at the side for the total resistance, RT. And we can say that RT is 5 ohms plus uh, 30 ohms in parallel with 10 ohms. And I'll express that just as a shorthand there, this double slash, 30 in parallel with 10. If you're not sure how to work out resistors in parallel, I recommend going back to a video where we covered that. Um, but in this case, 30 in parallel with 10 comes out as 7.5 ohms. So we can simplify this to 5 ohms plus 7.5 ohms. And that gives me a total of 12.5 ohms. So going back to our equation, we can now say that IA, the current from the armature, is equal to 100 divided by 12.5. And that gives me a current of 8 amps. We run into another problem though, because though we've established that our armature puts out a current of 8 amps, 8 amps is going to flow through the resistance of the armature. And again, we reach this point here where that current is going to split. Some of that 8 amps is going to go through the field windings, and some of that current is going to go through the load. Now in our case, we're interested in the output current of our generator. So it's this load current that we're interested in. And it's not going to be 8 amps, it's only going to be some of that 8 amps. And so to determine the output current, we're going to need to use the current divider rule. Now again, we've covered the current divider rule in a video on Kirchhoff's current law. And if you're not sure about it, I would recommend going back to that video. But in this case, we're going to say that the output current or the load current is going to be expressed by the current from the armature multiplied by a fraction. And what we said was when we've got two um, impedances where the current splits, 
so in this case the 10 ohms and the 30 ohms, then if we're interested in the current going through uh, the 10 ohms, we have to put the 30 ohms on the top of our fraction. And on the bottom of our fraction, we put both resistances added together. So our formula is going to look like this. It's going to have 30 on the top of our fraction. It's going to have 10 plus 30 on the bottom of our fraction. And calculating that, where IA is obviously 8 amps that we calculated above, uh, I get an answer of 6 amps. So we'll mark some of these values on our diagram because we've said first of all that our armature current, the current emerging from the armature there, is 8 amps. And we've determined that the load current is 6 amps. So the remaining must go through the field windings. In this case, it's going to be 2 amps. So now that we know this, we can calculate the power in the load, the output power of our generator. And to do that, we can use the formula P equals I squared R. Now, in this case, it's the power in the load resistor. So I have to use the load current squared multiplied by the load resistance. So we can put some values into our formula because we know, first of all, that the load current is 6 amps, which is squared, multiplied by uh, the resistance of the load, which is 10, 10 ohms. And that's going to give me a result of 360 and it's a power so it's measured in watts 360 watts the last thing we might want to calculate is the efficiency of our generator and the efficiency of a generator is determined by comparing the output power to the input power so we can express that as p out over p in so the output power over the input power now in our case the output power is the power we've calculated in the load resistor so better to express that as PL and the input power is the power produced in the armature so we'll call that PA finally to express this efficiency as a percentage we should multiply the result by a hundred to make it a percentage so let's have a go at that now the problem we have at first is we know the uh, power in the load, PL, but we don't know the power in the armature. So the first thing we have to do is calculate that by using the formula P equals I times V. Now we're calculating the power in the armature here, so we need to use the armature current and our original voltage produced at the armature. So let's put some values in there because we can say first of all that IA we know to be 8 amps and the voltage produced in the armature is 100 volts and so we can multiply those together to get 800 watts as our input power. So now that we know the input power and the output power of our generator we can calculate the efficiency. So as we said before the efficiency is equal to the power in the load over the power in the armature and we've said that is 360 watts over 800 watts and we're going to times that by 100 to make it a percentage and calculating that gives me 45 percent as the efficiency of this generator so only 45 percent of the power produced in the armature is actually transferred to the load in this case thanks for watching this video on dc shunt generators and i hope you found it useful Oh, 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 oh,